Okay, let's have a look at the flyweight design pattern. But before we dive into the theory, let me just show you a few examples of games which I think use this design pattern quite heavily. So first off, there's Ikaruga, that's a bottom-up shoot-em-up. And as you can see, there's huge amounts of bullets going on in this game. And there's probably two prefabs and, I don't know, 100, maybe 1000 instances of those prefabs for the bullets. So, um, you know, for the performance, as a coder, you have to be smart about this. You shouldn't tackle it headstrong into the wall. So you really should think how you implement this. So huge amounts of bullets might be a performance issue. You should always keep this in mind. The next game I'd like to show you is Factorio. It's a more niche game, but it's really amazing, especially if you're into optimizing things, which we as programmers are predestined to be. Uh, and uh, this game also would have huge problems if it didn't handle those huge amounts of objects correctly. As you can see, there are many uh, blue and uh, green and red potions and uh, I don't know, copper plates. Also, there are some iron plates down there. So huge amounts of items. If you zoom out a little bit in this game, there are thousands, tens of thousands, I think even hundreds of thousands of items at the same time, which you need to handle in your memory and processor. So as a programmer, you have to be really smart about implementing this kind of feature. So huge amounts of items is always a problem. And the last thing is probably also the most known because it's StarCraft II from Blizzard. Most of you will probably know it. And there's also huge amounts of instances of the same objects going on. So I don't know, a few hundred salads and a few hundred uh, circlings. Um, also in this case, you really need to be smart about your programming and you shouldn't just uh, program anything and hope it, its performance will be great. You really have to think about it before you start coding. And that's why I'm gonna show you this standard solution, this design pattern, which is meant to tackle one of the main problems you're gonna face if you implement games like these. So what are the problems you're gonna face when you have a game where you have huge amounts of instances of the same game object? Well, the first problem you're going to have is that you're going to flood the run. So it will be full very fast and you really need to optimize this because this is a huge performance issue if you're not smart in your programming. So as you can imagine, you're not the first one who has this problem. Actually, you're probably the millionth programmer who has this problem. So you can already imagine there is a standard solution for this problem. And this standard solution is the flyweight design pattern. But before we dive into the theory, let's first have a look at what exactly happens in our RAM. In order to understand what happens in our RAM, we're gonna assume we're programming a very, 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 very simplified StarCraft II. And yeah, so imagine this box is your RAM. And now you have a unit, to be exactly, it's a circling. And this circling needs to have a few variables. So in our case, it needs to have a current HP variable, which stores how many hit points the circling currently has. It should have a max HP variable. This variable stores how many HP it can have if it's on full life. And we have a move speed variable, which determines how fast our circling can move. And these three variables are everything our circling needs. As already said, it's a very simple StarCraft II. 
in a real world example you of course would need attack damage attack speed and uh, you need to think how to handle movement speed buffs and all those things we're not gonna think about that yet okay very simple abstract example okay so this is one circling if we happen to instantiate two more circlings this is what happens we just have two more circlings and for three circlings we need exactly three or pretty much exactly three times the space we would need for one circling so that's not the best scalability there is and in order to improve this we can do quite a few things so first of all we're gonna figure out which of these variables does really every single instance of a circling need and which of these variables can be stored only once because it is shared between all those circlings so let's first have a look at the current hp current hp definitely needs to be stored in each instance because if all the circlings in my game share the same variable if you kill one circling you kill them all that's not what you want so current hp definitely must be stored in a variable for every instance okay so we're not getting around that but what about max hp and movement speed do they really need to be stored for each circling there is because as far as i know in starcraft 2 each circling has exactly the same amount of hp so i think we could assume that this variable doesn't change and also it's the same for circling one two and three next thing if they don't change why do we need to keep one of these variables for each instance this just uses resources we could use otherwise for more textures or higher resolution textures or something like that so we should think if we could somehow put these two variables somewhere else or at least split them between all the circlings that there are and there's a few solutions to do that just so much i can tell you right now but many of these solutions have huge drawbacks okay so let's summarize it each instance of a circling should only save the variables which need to be different for every circling instance and also variables which are the same for every instance should not be copied for every instance instead they should be shared and just put into the ram once and not for each single instance so the ideal ram usage would look something like this you have first the general circling stats okay you have a max hp and a max movement speed and then you have the variables you need for each single circling so you need to have the current hp for circling one circling two and circling three so it's not completely accurate but if you look uh, at this uh, graphic you can see we only need about half the space in our ram that we did before so we are saving resources here and not just a little bit if you scale this up for i don't know thousand ten thousand items that's quite a huge impact that this kind of uh, design pattern has if you program it like that so the shared variables are only stored once and the variables which can change for each instance they need also to be stored for each instance hey i hope you learned something in this video and if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel also this video is part of my unity design pattern course over at udemy in this course i dive far deeper into the topic and teach you 
what the best practices are, how to implement them, and how to apply these concepts in an Endless Runner project. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to follow the link in the description below. The first 100 subscribers get a 50% discount on the course. And also it takes a huge amount of work to pump out these videos. So I'd really appreciate your help. Anyways, see you in the next video. Thank you.